everybody. We are totally blessed to have Abdul K. Bashir with us all the way from Costa Rica. Can you hear us, Abdul? I can hear you. He is living in love, absolutely. And he's going to share that with us. And I have to just slow down and be in that essence of love because I tend to be in joy. <laughs> but <I'm, laughs> just come down to living with love, absolutely. And when oh, I. Have, oh. Pardon? It's all relative. All relative, yes. And what is your favorite song that you picked? The Impossible Dream. Yes. And that's totally relative. <laughs> we will talk more about that. Here we go. Just going to play this one. The dream. The impossible dream. To find the unbeatable form To bear with unbearable sorrow And to know where the brave dare not go And to the unrightable wrong and to love your ancients from afar to try when your arms are too weary to the other reach of all stars. This is my place to follow. That's all. No matter how. No matter how. No matter dream that became your reality and so that you are fulfilling living love absolutely a fabulous song i will put the link on after we're done so everybody can take it in fully because it is just awesome and i'm sure most of us uh, do uh, find ourselves in that situation Where he realized that let's uh, be with that and accept the challenge. Yeah. So, how did you actually was? Was it just that the love came over you, that you accepted what seemed impossible, or what made you transform and have this beautiful healing from the inside out that you are now helping so many others just heal and be loved? Absolutely. Well, for me, I found myself with a lot of challenges in day-to-day -day life. Uh, before uh, the love before uh, doing business and being successful actually in, in business yeah. having been voted on for over a year uh, in 1992 and being invited to, to talk about business and to teach business 
<laughs> rather than uh, that have a desire to uh, that were uh, seen as successful as well. Allow me also to see with all that I had and all that I was striving to do on a daily basis to Mm -hmm. uh, um, I had to come to realize that I wasn't. And, you know, and uh, we're, we're trying to make things happen uh, for not only ourselves, but for many other people. And mm -hmm. uh, we go to sleep and to, you know, get back. And then we don't really, you know, kinds to seem like, you know, is it really a thing? <laughs> Something that, really? that you really, um, you know, for me, what happened is, um, I mean, because mm. I'm having one. Dream, so to speak, you know, you, you're be able to have uh, things mm -hmm. and, and allow you to have great experiences and um, to take care of your family in, in a way that seems prosperous and, you know, and uh, And then um, to allow me, it was uh, receiving this award. Uh, entrepreneur in outstanding any customers, my business uh, uh, team for a couple of years prior to that because my partner had died and mentor. And I had to take on the business by myself. And so my focus was just, okay, just business. We would get there, you know, through that vehicle. And not about being able to continue to, uh, to earn, you know, to be successful financially, to take care of the responsibilities yeah. that I have. You know, being in front of people where they're asking me questions and looking for something, they, they're looking at you as the expert in the right. that can lead them. You don't really. Uh, Um, you know, by asking you good questions and giving you an opportunity to, to share with them things that you've been going and really doing at light speed. So now you've got to slow down and explain to someone what this thing is like. And, and you know, then it that. Might have been unorthodox and how then to uh, start looking at details. When someone turned to you, so I felt this responsibility to these individuals and then even families that wanted to go into business. And share. And then I started looking at model and what I had been doing and the, what the the newcomers, uh, the aspirants, a way to do it. And um, they're in business. They're 
you know, you write a business plan have trying to do it on a day day to day basis based on the you know, in life and um, so you have to be prepared to, to ride the waves. And for me, he really, what happened is he got to that point. I have been blessed in life being able to, to get over maybe more gifted than I was able to realize and be able to um, to identify it as, as that. And until you know, after now, now um, I'm looking at my life. Um, how do I keep going? Mm-hmm. And yes, it felt like there was something missing. There was something in the eyes of these people. Um, and was the maybe, missing ingredient love? The missing ingredient actually um, to define love. Not really okay. realizing what love is. Okay. And because it's not this um, uh, most of our first lessons come from relationships. You know, yeah. Boy girl relationship. Yeah, love is falsely identified mm-hmm. in those relationships a lot of time. Most definitely. I would say most of them. 99.9. Right. Yeah. Feeling of black by giving up something to us in our receiving something from someone and it's it's really far from that because you know it has a less dramatic effect mm-hmm. in our existence than we realize although So it's a constant in, in this thing called business to come to a stop. So two years of being out and who's sharing business now, you know, I ended up creating a tumor, creating an illness because of this real realization that I was not happy. So my thoughts have shifted from um, what was a good life to how unhappy I was in living this life. And, and you know, I internalize these things and I try to yeah, escape from it by creating more business. And then it just became where these business start to um, deceive me. You know, it, it, it um, the partnerships, you know, they were doing things that, you know, things that I had done to be successful. Uh, it seemed like they were not going as as I would want this thing kind of, these things broke my heart, made me feel bad about that and having feelings. And then I'm to bury myself in more of it and the more I did it, the the less happy I became Mm -hmm. trying to change things on on the home front. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, a lot of times you're not home. And so, so when you what, and now you want to get it from home, and home is used to just getting on and doing what they got to do because you're not there. And so, you know, now you come in and you start looking to them for. Right. It's not always there. Like, well, what you talking about, Willis? You know. <laughs> you know? <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> everything, is, everything is good. We yeah. <laughs> I ended up doing uh, to the point where I created and uh, uh, put me in the hospital 
uh, near death, uh, dying actually, when mm -hmm. spinal cord surgery to remove it, to remove this tumor. Say, identify my my you know being stuck in this in the in that lifestyle that I was in and um and so this you know now I had to look at life differently and um the first day that I went in having to accept the fact that things were coming to us you know to, to slow down because I do this eight days a week, and um, and now it's say, okay. Well, let's identify what the, what the situation is. By the second day, I couldn't. You know, I started losing all my senses. Second day, I couldn't even taste food. Third day, I couldn't even feel my body at all, and um, uh, my body. Uh, they were waiting for the results of the test of, to identify how could they treat this situation. Right. And on day three, and said, you're ruptured, you're bleeding internally, and this is why you have these symptoms, and we have to go in and do surgery. Okay. I can fast forward past that because I, I end up blacking out and um, well where I realized something had to happen. I had something. <laughs> and um, yeah, I was sitting in this hallway alone. And the first thought that came to my mind was, you know, maybe, you know, uh, when I was getting, being given a second chance. And the moment I had that thought about being given a second chance, this voice said, this is not about you. I hear this voice and it says, it, it tells me that my family and friends are waiting for me and my purpose is to be an inspirer of men and women and I am to inspire them. And you do. And then I got blessed with the great choices, choices, choices. <laughs> but um, they say that uh, I'm, I, you know, I'm now I'm supposed to, you know, it's like I, I'm supposed to be an inspired man and women me with this greatest love, the greatest love I ever felt. Now you can imagine a mother's love, uh, you know, a father's love, a parents' love, and then you just multiply that by a you know, you just parent love. You don't really feel like you have a purpose. You don't feel that you're special. And but I felt like I felt all these things in that instant. Um, and thing and then. A moment later, a nurse appeared and said, oh, you're awake. We're preparing your room for you. And they took me upstairs and uh, I did a little transfer from the thing, from the bed, from the stretcher to the bed. I was paralyzed from the bed. And then, and with this thought fresh in my mind that now that I'm supposed to be this inspired men and women, I said, well, wow, this must be in the future because I can't move anything. And, you know, and so it, everything kind of happened. Uh, you know, time stopped. Mm -hmm. But this, this sense, this sense of, uh, of love and purpose, it, it's thing. Thing. This this energy that's constantly taking care of us, that we don't even respect, 
to, to say one thing. We don't put enough attention on it. Right. Uh, right. And it's simply always there. And so in our state, We can have something else has failed us in this world. So when we, we, we allow ourselves to recognize that, then love appears. Always been here. And oh. so it, it, it starts to exemplify giving us. And for me, it was like guiding me through uh, first the, yeah, I, see tubes in me and for the first time in my life I have to uh, focus on living I have to do something to live and these machines are measuring my contribution because really the body is a machine unto itself it was created with Eat into it, it itself so that it can sustain you. And the from the moment that of your inception or well, conception, mm-hmm. you know, th- this thing started to happen from this seed. And all everything you needed was ins- inside. It's all here. Inside of that and, and bringing you inside, of, yeah, inside yourself. And while you're inside the womb, the vehicle. Mm-hmm. And loving you, to, then you come to air. We step it away because it's this thing that's invisible, and you, because you come out and you seeing things now, because now you have eyes, and you start looking at a world. So everything appears to you as physical. So you start identifying yourself as physical. Very seldom realize that the love that you are is invisible. It doesn't have no no beginning or no end. It is a presence, right? And so you don't have to start it in and out on 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 a, on a regular basis, twenty four hours a day, seven days a week, <laughs> and. Um, because our focus is guided to do things in this world of physicality, then the thing we really need, the really you know, to, to put our attention on ends up getting put on the back burner because we start focusing on becoming something. And we something. You know, this happened years ago, May 5th, 1994. It was the day that uh, the surgery happened, and I was brought back to this plane. Mm-hmm. And all this time, at first, what was in the forefront of my mind was purpose uh, the fact that I survived. and you know, I had been in this hospital with spinal cord injury. People's okay. If you're still in this hospital, um, my consciousness had to shift from there to recognizing that creation, for one, is on automatic. Mm-hmm. We're actually in this experience that is constantly unfolding. And our function, if anything, is to recognize that which already is. There are things through life that you attempt to do that, you know, you will fail at every time. Seemingly. And there, every now and then you get to do something and you get it right. You find yourself aligned with that thing, and and so, and this happens, you know, purposeful, purposefully, so that you can continue and really 
you recognize are being guided and that you're part of this creation it comes when we get we start where uh, things are happening that shouldn't be happening right where it's some, right. with something that we're uh or we're, we're being something that we shouldn't be or <laughs> You know, a whole lot of judgment, let's call it a thing. And on that judgment Judgment. note, I just want to, because I am having a tremendous amount of energy moving through me during this conversation. Okay, so I am releasing so much. So for those that are going, oh, she's falling asleep on Abdul. No, I am yawning. I can't seem to sit still. It's all going through my hips. And that is something I'm now totally aware of and I just go with it whatever the process is because energy does shift and move it could be because he's in Costa Rica I'm here I have no idea but I just want you to all know I love Abdul I'm listening to the story but there's a lot coming Mm -hmm. in here okay (laughs) don't judge me for going (laughs) no she's becoming alive be alive (laughs) (laughs) it started in the hips that's where it was it's like i'd get the hula hoop out (laughs) but yeah something's going on so so in this process of no judgment and recognizing that love is everywhere how did you get from new york city and your family and being in that role, like what got you to Costa Rica and to start to start to be where you are and help the people that you do? Obedience, in a word, because um, I, I spent you know time and um, it's showing me things, you know, even on the intracellular level because. It showed me things in my experience. The person living this life uh, prior to this uh, surgery mm-hmm. that had prepared me for what was lying ahead. And so, what was going on, this relationship that I was having with this uh, boy, is, um, was something that I didn't share with him. How are um, and I would share that information, how I, you know, I is in the middle of the victim. And I, with that knowledge, that knowing I was able to take control of my, uh, my health in the hospital, bring my own food in, you know, nourishing myself, uh, starting my healing process from, uh, from uh, before leaving. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, just... Basically, being being obedient um, because I started having visions as well and dreams that guided me, people, partners to help that are on this planet that allow us to to thrive. You know, if we obey, you know, and the whole thing is about accepting. So, if you arrived here. Everything you need is also here as well. But because we are distracted and um, let's say we not to our inner, we are listening to someone and someone is telling us something we don't know. And so we have to get knowledge from outside ourselves. And this is very misleading. But when you start to learn to listen internally and accept and be obedient, accept that guidance, then magical things start happening. So Jeez. this is exactly what happened for me. It had me to believe that I could still walk. Mm-hmm. Really, nerves out. That gave me any sensation. In my body, it got nerves out that didn't allow me to even experience temperature in my environment. Um, every time I close my eyes, I literally disappeared. Right. And so, but what me 
information spirit that allow me to appreciate being in you know um, being in in spirit or being in God every time I close my eyes more than being in the body which at that point was very weak and you know needed some reconstruction right and I came out when I got visions and uh, in Atlanta at the time mm-hmm. and he was very much into spiritual things and you know I mean you know I had my religious practice but I was not into this but my brother was more into that and into natural healing and he had uh, you know spoke to some people in his network uh, about me while I was in out mm-hmm. and I started having these visions and I started treating of him and uh, he connected me with this woman that I kept seeing repetitiously in his dream who happened to be the, pre- the president of the Natural Healers Network down there. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, I said, well, I told him I need to speak to her and when we connected and spoke and the conversation with her saying to me, well, you have to come here. And me, you know, I myself to drive again, my car control, my car, and um, be more independent. And so I had some things that I was wrapping up in New York City, and I literally um, found housing in Georgia, mm-hmm. in Atlanta, and uh, and that's where my process began, where. Um, I um, this school and I was still very much business um, minded, okay, mm-hmm. business minded, and so I felt that my responsibility with them not having any particular healing thing um, was to help them. Right. To be who they are and process of healing um, um, from the inside out and really um, making peace with my, my family and um, and releasing that because the voice had told me uh, during my hospital stay to let everything go for him. Mm-hmm. And the everything was emphasized in my consciousness yeah. where it was like you just to trust this was a moment to be completely in faith and the obedience. So when she said, you got to come here, I backed up and then moved down there. And I started having these healing experiences every full moon. They would meet and uh, the healers would, you know, show up and all these different modalities. And um, it was quite an experience for me which allowed me to gain a lot of respect for natural healing. Mm-hmm. And, and then, you know, um, on occasion, different ones would come and tell me they have to give me a gift. They have to activate something in me. And, you know, I'm still, you know, now living in this body where I don't really feel my body. So I don't, I'm not identifying myself as physical. And mm-hmm. so I'm not thinking of using my physical to help people at that point. My mind was the strongest thing and my voice, the, the voice had told me that, okay, we're gonna use your voice to help others. And so my, it allowed me to see things that would help the healers to see how they were managing their, uh, their gifts. And, you know, I saw a lot of fear in them from taking on the, um, the healing full time. A lot of them were working, you know, being healers part time and not those financially, you know, being that. So now you you actually in this process. And so nobody got it. We're gonna have to sort of finish up here, Abdul. Is is you now yourself have 
are able through the whole process to actually pass on this beautiful love and help others, however you want to say, catalyze, harmonize their healing. Is that correct? Right, exactly. So it was about really organizing, first of all, organizing in order to know. So that was the beginning of my process. So I would to a lot of the things. And so my obedience had brought me to a, to a family that would share information and activate me and uh, position me to be initiated and inside of a fire, I would be guided and be told different things that would, uh, well, have me receive this mission that would uh, invite me to Costa Rica. And so I had been in the mountains uh, one time and this Native American would tell me um, I had to go to New Mexico and um, three other places um, when I finished going to these places I would have my purpose Montana um, I would uh, nothing really super happened mm -hmm. he said well sometimes to Atlanta I got this phone call and the friend that I had met in New Mexico um, had this yoga retreat center in Costa Rica Okay. And he said, I do well, you know, you know, you got to go there. You can be the spiritual director of my center there. And that's how I got out of the country, you know, again, being obedient to the process and then coming here to Costa Rica, the next level, because I was in a beautiful place and being on purpose 24 hours a day, just sharing my gifts. And there's nothing better when you can just be. You know, I mean, yeah. <laughs> you go to sleep and do being, and you wake up being. And but uh, the next thing was really connecting with this connection with the Costa Rican people. Well, motivated I, to create my own center. In 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 terms of timing here, the. Um, I have put your links and your information of how people can get in contact with you because I think the most important thing about your particular story, I mean, there's so much gems in there of wisdom, is that for people, if they're noticing that they're having pain or discomfort or struggle or any type in their life, is start to listen to it one now, which we're also having another conversation later about pain's wake-up call. It's there for a reason. And then, two, when you have this awakening to yourself where you realize there's something more than you, more than your body, that you really tap into, follow that love, that sense of knowingness and trust that everything's going to work out to your advantage and then you're led to give and contribute and be that presence of love in the world and then you're receiving love and it's an ongoing flow and we're just creating these waves around the earth. Is that a good way of sort of saying love? Absolutely. Twenty-four hours a day, it's bathing you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, hours a day. That is love. Absolutely, it doesn't ask anything of you. It, you know, it just contributes to your every desire. It will go to, go with you to do whatever thing you desire to do. Be it look at polarities. It's going to it's going to be with you process. So that moment on that, because that's why in most spiritual paths, you know, meditation is very important because you have to be still in order to recognize that love. And then you can recognize yourself as love. Absolutely. That is a perfect way to finish off. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Loving you. Love you. Absolutely. All right. Peace. <laughs>